I asked my boyfriend for an open relationship so that I could sleep with women and uh -oh. that was terrifying. <laughs> Yes, I am drinking Coke Zero as my main source of hydration. I mean, it's like 90% water, right? Carbonated water is the first ingredient on here. I had an argument with my girlfriend recently about this. This is liquid, don't you understand? Like, look at how much I've drunk it out of that bottle. Drink your fucking water. <laughs> it's not a nice flavor. <laughs> Anyway, I do feel like I should be making some kind of a beauty blog at the moment with the like professional backdrop and stuff. Today I'm doing this makeup look right here. So a lot of you have noticed that I haven't been putting up a lot of video content in really quite a while. And it's quite embarrassing to admit this, but Quick interruption to let you guys know, today's video is brought to you by my friends at Moments Condoms. And Moments Condoms have some really exciting news. They have just launched Moments Pleasure Toys. Whether you're going solo or you're with your bae, their toys are going to make sure you have lots of unforgettable moments. The lineup includes Vibin, Baddy, CEO, and Mood. The Vibin, it's the perfect ergonomic design for handheld clitoral stimulation with or without a partner. With 10 different vibration modes, a wireless remote, and vibrating tips for enhanced clitoral stimulation, you cannot go wrong with the body. The CEO is a tongue-shaped clitoral vibrator with a vibrating tip to provide enhanced stimulation. Mood isn't your average sex toy. It has two separate ends for double the fun. This is the perfect toy for taking partnered sex to the next level. They've just launched, but the range is already selling out. So get in quick and head to momentscondoms.com.au to stock up on some self-love. A lot of you have noticed that I haven't been putting up a lot of video content in really quite a while. And it's quite embarrassing to admit this, but it's almost completely to do with how I look. I mean, it's also to do with my extreme disorganization skills and the fact I almost certainly have undiagnosed ADHD. My suitcase is just sitting like this. I leave it like this for like a week. I am quite a confident person and I believe that so much of people's beauty and sex appeal is tied up in their confidence and how they hold themselves. And so I believe that that makes me attractive, but it is hard online to have to have my appearance picked apart all the time. This is actually a pretty good segue into what I wanted to talk about today. And it's something that I have really noticed since I've immersed myself in the lesbian community. Those of you that have been following me for a while will know that I've gone through quite a journey. When I started out here on YouTube, I was identifying as bisexual. The truth is, I am bisexual. But I'd always felt like something was missing. Long story short, I asked my boyfriend for an open relationship so that I could sleep with women. And he agreed. That was when I realized that I'm not bisexual. I found myself imagining what a future could be like with a woman. I never let myself imagine that before. I have only come out as a lesbian in the last like two and a half years now. And in that time, I've gotten to know more lesbians and I have truly been shocked at how much of a gap there is in the beauty standards that we have for women when comparing gay women to straight men. And I say this because a lesbian page that I follow recently posted this tweet. And the comment section, which was obviously predominantly lesbians, was essentially just women collectively saying, Huh? How does that ruin outfits? They weren't only saying it's not a bad thing, they were saying it's actually a very beautiful and sexy thing. I have to agree, tummies are so goddamn sexy. A woman with a soft tummy is just chef's kiss. Going through so much of my life as someone who was dating men before I came out, I felt a lot of pressure to have a quote unquote flat stomach and to maintain 
a low level of body fat. I haven't felt that pressure at all since coming out as a lesbian and I especially don't look at other women that way. I do not find women less attractive because they're in larger bodies. There are some women I find more attractive than others but in general I think women are just incredible. This whole idea that we're just not allowed to have any body fat at all, we're not allowed to have a tummy, we have to be constantly reducing ourselves down. It really is something that comes from predominantly men. I'm saying predominantly men because every time I try to talk about something to do with men, people come for me hard in the comment section. I get called a man hater, I get called a crazy feminist, whatever that is supposed to be. People always want to scream that it's not all men that think this way and I acknowledge that not all men think this way but I think it is pretty common among men to prefer women to be very small. And sometimes the way that straight men actually talk about women and women's bodies, it really makes me ask the question, do straight men actually like women? You will never see so much hate, so much bitterness that comes specifically almost exclusively from men than in the comments section of a woman confidently existing in a large body. Women who dare to push against the stereotype of constantly trying to reduce themselves down and just allow themselves to exist at whatever size their bodies want to be are a threat to a culture that has told us we need to just be obsessed with getting smaller and smaller and smaller to minimize ourselves to the point of becoming invisible. And in a way, that's really what the culture we live in, which is a patriarchal culture, wants is for women to be small and quiet and to reduce ourselves down and let men be in control. There is just a huge segment now, a, a very disturbingly exploding growing segment now of men that are self-proclaimed coaches telling other men they need to get a woman to be submissive to them. Besides the fact that this ideology causes men to really dehumanize women and just basically look at women as objects, which is very worrying because it definitely contributes to a culture that is more conducive to sexual harassment and sexual assault because when we don't see women as full human beings, it's easier to do bad things to them. It also is like these men kind of just want a mummy. I want my mummy. I want my mummy. Like they don't actually want an equal partner. And it makes me really sad to see so many women being obsessed with trying to constantly have less body fat to be visually appealing when actually they are perfect just as they are. This is something that we have been taught by the male gaze. And I think it would be really beneficial for women to look at themselves through the female gaze. Next time you look in the mirror, whether you have a small tummy or an enormous tummy, just appreciate the fact that you are gorgeous and beautiful just as you are. And yes, I do realize the irony because I've started out this video talking about how it is really hard for me to come on camera sometimes and make content because I don't feel good in the way I look. Mine is less so tied into my weight and more so tied into the aging process. I'm gonna be 40 next year and my body, my face is aging. As I age, part of me feels more powerful and more confident and more comfortable in myself and just gives less fucks about what other people think of me. But there is another nagging part of me that at certain times comes up quite strongly. It's a part of me that says that I shouldn't age because aging is the loss of beauty. We often hear from men that a woman's market value goes down after she's over 30. Some men will even say after she's over 25. As women, we know that when you're in your early 20s, you do not know yourself and you are just desperate to be accepted. And you have especially been taught and you especially believe that your value lies in men finding you attractive. I know that that's why I thought I was attracted to men for so long because 
whenever I got attention from men, I really enjoyed it and I got excited about it and I thought that meant that I liked men. But what I was actually getting excited about was the fact that it felt like I was fulfilling a kind of like cultural standard that had been set for me. Drink break. Coming from the straight world, a world that I had very much tried to conform to for most of my life, I found it incredibly freeing how much broader the definition of beauty and sexiness is among queer women. Because in the straight world, it is incredibly narrow. I need to remove all of my body hair. I need to stay slim. I need to have long hair. I need to wear makeup, but not too much makeup or else I might look slutty, but not too little makeup or else I might look like I don't care. But as a lesbian, so many of those things are insignificant. For example, my partner having some hair on her legs because she didn't have time to shave them this week is not something that would turn me off. As a late bloomer lesbian, I have found there's just so much more room to just allow my body to be a body without constantly having it in a state of renovation. I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't enjoy makeup and things like Botox. I have many beauty procedures which I still do. Are those things that I do because I still partly see myself through the male gaze? Most likely yes because it is kind of inescapable. When we set all of these super narrow standards for women and tell women that unless they fit within this they don't matter, they don't have any appeal, they don't have any value. What we are really saying is that women just exist as objects in the world. They are just ornaments to decorate the shelves of the halls that men walk through. And honestly, nothing brings me more happiness than seeing women be free in their bodies. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love for you to join my fam here on YouTube. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you all in the next video. I think this is what they were talking about when they said girl dinner. Girl, girl dinner, dinner, girl dinner. Girl. 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 Girl.